The term cadastral systems is not really in our everyday vocabulary, but perhaps it should be because they influence almost every movement we make in Louisiana and in this nation. What they are are surveying systems. The term comes from cadastral capitastrum, which was essentially sort of a record or a ledger recording land ownership and where that land was. And so a cadastral system is the whole set of uh, geometries and philosophies guiding how different societies divvied up land. So if we go back to early colonial times, Western powers claiming the Americas understood that land conceded to private entities would quite literally lay the groundwork for wealth production. They proceeded to survey cadastres over lands previously occupied by indigenous societies with no such concept. What followed ranks as the largest land transfer the world has ever known, and it would create tragic injustices for some while imparting key advantages to others. Louisiana is just about unique in the nation in that it has the cadastral fingerprints of four major powers occupying this area. France, Spain, Great Britain, and the United States. And one of the most interesting areas within Louisiana to look at these different surveying systems is in the East and West Feliciana portion of old British West Florida and Spanish West Florida uh, versus the old Francophone French Creole region of New Roads and Point Coupee Parish right across the Mississippi. If you look on the British side, you see Anglo-Saxon influences, you see Anglo-Saxon names, you're more likely to see Greek Revival architecture and the styles brought down from uh, Anglo-Saxons, whereas when you're on the more French Creole side, you'll see above-ground tombs, you'll see French names, and you'll see more French Creole West Indian architecture. And you also see the different surveying systems that those two groups brought down. The French were the first European power to inscribe their cadastral system into the Louisiana landscape. They mostly settled riparian, riverine areas. The surveying ideology that they used recognized that each of these planters needed the river or bayous for transportation as well as irrigation. They also recognized that the higher, better drained, more fertile natural levees is where all of the agricultural productivity was going to come from. So they divided up these riverine lands into elongated French long lots as they're known and they were typically measured in by the unit arpent which is roughly the French equivalent of the acre it measures 192 feet and a French arpent was used both for a linear distance as well as an area so a typical French long lot measured 40 arpents or 80 arpents from the water body a river or a bayou going back to usually to the back swamp France controls Louisiana until the beginning of the end of the French and Indian War, whereupon France cedes areas west of the Mississippi plus New Orleans over to Spain. Meanwhile, areas east of the Mississippi, including where we are right now in East Feliciana Parish, becomes British West Florida. And it remains a British colony from 1763 to 1783. So over that 20 year period, who moves down here predominantly are mostly Anglo-Saxon British colonists coming from the Northeast. And like every other colonizing group, they bring their cadastral systems with them. The British cadastral system was known as meets and bounds, meaning meetings of boundaries. And the way this would work was a very irregular system. It might be that a property line would run along a curving road, connecting to a stream, from that stream down to a boulder, from that boulder over to an oak tree, from that oak tree back along a, a stream, back to the road. Uh, and so if you look at maps to this day, of the New England area of Virginia, Kentucky, coming down the Carolinas, you'll see a spider web of these irregular properties that can be traced back to British colonial times. After the Louisiana Purchase, American administrators arrived to Louisiana with their own cadastral system. Now they recognized the legal right of the French long lots and the other surveying systems to persist. For areas that, that were not yet surveyed, the Americans felt that they had a superior system. It was invented by Thomas Jefferson and through the land ordinance of 1785 was used throughout the Northwest Territory and later the Southwest. And the way it worked was that it brought 
orthogonal Cartesian rigidity to the surveying of lands. So instead of these irregular meets and bounds and these elongated French long lots, the American system was based on geometry. Each state and territory had a baseline or x-axis and a principal meridian or y-axis. The areas in between were subdivided into six mile by six mile cells. For every one of those cells, north and south of the baseline, that was referred to township. For every cell east or west of the principal meridian, that was referred to as range. And for every one mile cell within those six mile cells, that was referred to as a section. Every area had a township, a range, and a section. And then the sections were subdivided even further. So what's interesting about Louisiana is we have examples of meets and bounds and Spanish ranchos and French long lots nestled up against American township and range. <laughs>